Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome once again to the Kingdoms podcast. And I have with me a beautiful fighter from the BKFC. I've got Alex Papa Al Delgado. How are you, Alexandra? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, like just before we started, we were talking about, you know, how beautiful you are. And, you know, I don't like it when I see, you know, fine girls fighting and then get it all bashed off. Whoa. <laughs> remember, remember we were talking yesterday. When we were th- speaking yesterday, you were like, oh, give me a day for my face to heal up. And I'm like, okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's it looks a lot I- better today. <laughs> Let's, let's see let's see what it is like today whoa is, they stitch me up real nice as soon as they bring you back there they just get right on fixing you wow but then you know uh congratulations on the win against uh, jessica oh, thank Reese. you, you know, <laughs> tough tough opponent tough 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 opponent whoa and of course like before like i was saying you know just you know before we started the podcast right like i'm mm-hmm. i'm going to talk to david feldman right to 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 bring you to one of the london cards you know let's have oh, the beautiful great. alexandra in london but then you <laughs> said you were looking forward to the fish and chips in london and of course you know i just had to to give you the heads up that british food is not it's not the best let me be careful what i say <laughs> it's north american food known for being better north american food no, I think it's kind of better, even though it's not healthy. No. Yeah, it's not healthy. No. But you guys, but yeah, I guess bigger. we got a little bit of everything here. Yes, you guys are bigger in taste than you know, um, British, <laughs> uh, British food. You know, the first question I like to ask people on the podcast is, you know, what uh-huh. was your childhood was like. You know, for you, what was your childhood like? What was the sorry? What was the what like? Your childhood. Your childhood. How was growing My up? My childhood. Like, yeah. My childhood. You know, grew up poor. Whoa. Nothing spectacular. Whoa. Why, 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 why is that? Most fighters, you know, most fighters. I've spoken to a lot of fighters on a podcast, right? But yeah. most fighters, you know, usually have a grass to grace story. Do you think it's like, it's like a, an important ingredient in making a fighter? Yeah, I think it builds character. And you know, lots of the kids who are privileged, they go into the more primary sports such as soccer and football. But Mm -hmm. I feel like the fight world, because, you know, there's weight classes and all that stuff, there isn't like very selective teams. You, everyone can make a name for themselves. It really evens out the playing ground. I see. I think there's a lot of opportunity for people who haven't had that opportunity just given to them growing up to be an athlete. I see. Yeah. I see. So, so you said you came from a poor background, right? Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, grow up? Where about? Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Oh wow, that's Canada. Yeah. Middle of Canada. Oh, Saskatoon. Yeah. Damn. Around the is... Prairie. Oh, and it is. It is cold. I imagine. In winter, yeah. In winter, it gets very cold. It really fluctuates. You get Terrible. a little bit of all the weather. Just not, not really much protecting the city, right? It's, it's just the, fields. Yeah, the fields. Yeah, the prairies, right? The, the, the large, yeah. you know, grasslands. So you don't mm-hmm. really have um a windbreaker. So I can imagine like what winter would be over there. It's going to be horrible. Yeah, snow and wind. But hey, snow Everyone and wind. Everything's about white Christmas. We got a lot of it. No, 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 no. By the way, on your Instagram profile, you call yourself the Coffee Field Fighter. So I have yeah. got some coffee right here with me to send them to, over to feel <laughs> me. To feel me while oh. talking to the coffee. <laughs> oh, smell oh, it, smell it, smell it, there. smell it. Uh, don't worry. I, I promise you some nice coffee when when you come to London. I really, really hope you you are on a London fighting card. And by the way, you know. This is uh, September the 5th, right? Today is so, September the 5th, right? Yeah, September the 5th. So your episode is going to be out on Saturday. Saturday is what? Saturday is, let me see. That September what? The 7th? September the 7th. Yeah, you're correct. Yes. You're correct. And guess what? September 14th, right? Anyways, it's not your promotion, but it's Bellator. So mm-hmm. Bellator have that title fight coming up in London. And I'm going to be there. Oh, amazing. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I wait, I'm waiting for the BKFC to come back to London, you know, so I can mm-hmm. be there as well. It's, 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 it's really interesting, you know, being a fan of fighting, right? Watching it live. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a different ball game. But let's yeah, like, get back, back to you. 
let's get back to you right you're okay. canadian but then you've got um latino origin right yeah my dad so is ancestry. from cuba your dad is and cuba. my mom is from philippines so oh. it's an emotional mix we're also big into fighting so so you've boyfriend got has his hands full lots of fights and tears mm. so you've got the cuban boxing you know blood in you of course you've got the money pacquiao you know style in <laughs> here as well i see i see you especially beautiful especially beautiful fighting but like growing up who, who are those people you looked up to and like who were the people who influenced you you know when you were growing up when i was growing up well mike tyson mike tyson Obviously, everybody wants to be like mike and honestly van damme you know? <laughs> oh, it's a big oh, fan of like blood sport no like way. A boxer. So I always inspired to be ninja like Van Damme. And then there was Pacquiao. Pacquiao, definitely from your mom's side. Yeah. Yeah. Always family get or not family get togethers, but the get togethers with her friends growing up have been revolving around Pacquiao. Oh whoa, whoa. I, I see that Pacquiao yeah. is really a very, very big influence, you know. Um, back home in Philippines, right? But of oh, course, yeah. I think he's also like a real global influence, right? And Filipinos around the world like celebrate him, like he's got this idolic um, status uh, globally. Mm -hmm. so, so speak to us about, you know, his strong influence, you know, over you and in, in terms of bringing you into the fighting game. Well, yeah, I think, you know, if I didn't grow up with boxing in the home, I could have just ended up doing really any other sport or just playing the clarinet or something else. But, mm. you know, something that always excited me and then seeing a fighter of a shorter stature do so well, mm. you know, it makes you just think. Just like Mike Tyson did, you know, in the heavyweight yeah, division. Yeah, Mike Tyson. Yeah, you can see he's my favorites, Madonna. They're the ones without the greatest reach on them. <laughs> like, but, but, but do you think... Being short is sort of like an advantage uh, because, um, okay, I'll, I'll talk about something. A friend of mine, I am from Nigeria, right? So yes. there is, uh, there's a friend I used to have like way back, um, I think it was like around 2016, 2017, right? So she is quite short. I think she's like five foot. But then she put something on her Instagram that, you know, stuck in my head. It was quite audacious. She wrote on her Instagram bio, being short is not a shortcoming. No. Wow, you can like... hold more muscle on her frames, right? <laughs> I'll you can like, have, okay. have more power. And of course, you guys, have, you, you guys have a lower center of gravity. Yeah. Easier, to, harder to knock down. Yes. Yes. I think so. And, you know, you really got to develop your style over the frame that you've been given. Hmm. So I think it does, I think it does create or call for a more fiery, aggressive style that I think is a lot more excitement. Than yeah, what you would get for somebody who's taller for their weight class. Yes, or they exactly. might want to be keeping a little bit more keep away. They might be want you want to play a little bit more keep away. The short when the short people actually want to be in there and they actually want to fight. They want to create chaos and they want to create excitement. So mm. I think it's actually a huge advantage because yeah, I, I do think it makes my style more exciting than if I was an average height sure. taller fighter. Yeah, if, you, if you're taller. So I, I see that it's kind of like an advantage in something like, you know, boxing and bare knuckle, right? Because um, the, the, the style of bare knuckle, right, hmm. is more about fighting in the pockets, fighting at the close range. That is why the, the, the ring for bare knuckle is even small right? They want you, yeah. they want you to, you know, box up, you know, buckle up on like, you know, a spot like MMA, for example, where you can afford to do more distance management, right? So I feel like being, you know, longer for the weight class is sort of an advantage in, you know, MMA, but in boxing, being shorter sort of helps you because, you know, you can easily get into the clinch, right and of course if you know how mm -hmm. to manage your frame well you know being taller is also an advantage if you know how to you know you know fight you know at a distance right but then being shorter yeah. is you know you closing the range because when you close the range you you distort you distort the rhythm of the taller fighter and of course yeah yeah you have more power in in, in your fist you really just gotta work and just make the most of what's been given to you Hmm. Which is yet another, another beautiful thing about fighting. Lots of sports, let's say, I don't have the right frame for basketball. Right? Like, what are the, yeah, but. Oscar's what? 
the basket a lot. <laughs> She's on red finger football, but yeah, box, boxing, weight class sports, fight sports, really even out the playing field makes things more fair for the, for the smaller people. Uh, who still have a lot of fight in them, right? Let, let's see, what's, what's your height officially? What's your height? It is 5'1". So I was actually the same height as my opponent for this fight, which surprised okay. me a little bit. I'm usually the sh shorter fighter, but yeah, we were exact same height. I see. They made the same height, similar reach. Yeah, basically my twin. I won. If if you make you feel feel better that there are women that are four eleven or five I zero. Scared. I feel amazing at five one. Oh, five one. <laughs> but then you know, <laughs> like oh, 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 over over your lifetime, right? You know, a lot of people like to troll short people. Yeah, a, a lot of people like to show short people. I, I'm six zero, for example. Mm -hmm. So for me, like in my life, I feel like oh, like for for a guy six zero, that's like the minimum height sort of for basketball, right? So okay, you kinda, yeah, you kind of feel like oh, you've you've made it in life, right? Like being a tall guy because for basketball, <laughs> I feel like six foot is like. Is, no, is the this golden a height. Oh, really? Why? 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 Why do you think six foot is a golden height? I don't know. Maybe because it's I'm me. Because I'm so short. I feel like six foot. You can. You can basic. That's that's really hard to say now that you're really. <laughs> <laughs> you promised to be having a good behavior, right? Because <laughs> I promised to be a good behavior. You promised to be a good girl. I see. I see. You, you're trying to keep. You're trying to keep to it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me without saying so. You want like, to hear more about you being in the perfect height? <laughs> no, 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 no. I felt like you were trying to restrain yourself, right? Because I remember, yeah. like, when we started, just before we hit the record button, I was like, okay, the only thing out of bounds is not saying the F word. And then you promised that, oh, I'm going to be a good girl. I'm like, okay, good girl. So I guess you, you, you were probably trying to say something and, you know, probably just had to rethink, okay, let me, let me rephrase, let me rephrase, right? But, you know, yeah. when it comes to, when it comes to, like, um the, the height of basketball, right? So, mm -hmm. six foot, you know, you have six guys that are six foot plus, right? And of course, you have like some few guys that are like seven, seven foot or something. But then I feel like those ones, you know, they're like outliers. They're out of the range, like human beings, right? Um, yeah. When it when comes to the lower end of the range, you now start seeing people that are five. For, for girls, right? I think women, and this is unfair, women are, are deemed beautiful even when they're short. Yeah, I am fortunate right. to have come out yes. to get my eyes. I, I, yes. I but imagine a guy that is your height. Come on, you will have a tough time, you know, you know, getting the girls. A little bit of maybe a little bit of what they called short, short guy, short man, little man syndrome. <laughs> little man syndrome. I know I have a little bit of it myself. Oh, really? Really? Like, it feels like yeah. people who have that little frame always, you know, walk around with a chip on their shoulder. They always have something to prove. I wouldn't say it's a chip on the shoulder, but you basically have to stand up for yourself a little bit more because people aren't going to take you seriously. Mm. You know, you are going to get pushed around more. And I think this happens a lot more to men because generally, you know, it's yes. not very acceptable to be pushing around women. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yes. I do think, yeah, there's a lot of respect just purely based on body frame especially for men you're not yes, gonna I go know. and mess with the you're not gonna go mess with the six point six foot five monster you're yeah, not gonna tell exactly. them to get, you're not gonna cut off cut, cut out cut you're not gonna cut in line in the coffee shop for somebody with six <laughs> six five right <laughs> little guy you <laughs> pretend not to see it and just step in front <laughs> because you, you, you will think oh. again you think you get like oh, we'll oh, think oh again. what yeah. what what, what do you, you know, you know yeah. it's interesting <laughs> like how even though I'm six foot, right? Anytime I meet guys that are like six five, six four, I feel short around them. I'm like, oh, excuse me. And you know, I like I don't get to see a lot of women that are taller than me. So anytime I see a girl that is taller than me, I always have to look a second time. Like, when who are you? <laughs> I, when you see girls that are six foot plus, you would always take a second look at them. I think that's oh, yeah. one thing. Yeah, that's one thing with the body frame, right? People with you know with height on them always have that you know sense of presence, and you would always like want to to have a second look at them. But like we rightly said, being short is not a shortcoming. But like, how did you now get into fighting, right? Is it mm -hmm. a matter of nature or a matter of nurture? Like, how did you get into fighting? You 
obviously you. come I... from you know fighting ancestry but how did you get into it you know i think it started with my brother joining the high school wrestling team I'm a year and a half younger than him, oh. you know, just basically called, I mean, that was basically his tag along little sister. Are you a tomboy? Yeah. I'm a tomboy, yes. I think you might have found that annoying when we were younger, but <laughs> it works out now that we're older and I'm not just, you know, the kid sister anymore. But Whoa. he ended up not, not sticking to wrestling, but I loved it, so I stuck to it. Did it for two years. Went okay. to went on a family vacation. Just me and my mom went to the Philippines. I came back kinda a little bit heavier. So before re the wrestling season started up again, I just asked if I could join this grappling gym that was close to my house, Way of the Dragon. Right, just uh basically just get back in shape. But then I just ended up loving it. So I ended up quit quitting wrestling and went the MMA route. Oh wow. Interesting. Yeah. MMA is yeah. my best sport in my life <laughs> and it's 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 funny how like i got into mma right because i grew up in nigeria and nigeria football soccer is you know it's a bread and butter for sports yeah. mma is really not even very big yet in nigeria the reason why you know a lot of people in nigeria are becoming you know fans of mma getting to know mma is because of people like kamaru usman who went on to become ufc champion people like israel adesanya who went up to become you know ufc champion so he brought that awareness of the sports to mm -hmm. nigeria right but for me like i think conor mcgregor was the one who brought my attention to the sport with you know the khabib fight yeah and you know i started you know going down the rabbit hole discovered oh there's a nigerian like myself who who is a champion like kamaru's man and then i got to discover Isola Adesanya, right and i think around 2021 i did have an auto accident right that nearly claimed my life so i had to be home for a couple of months right i wasn't working and then guess what i was just watching yeah. ufc fight pass <laughs> that was you know how i got into into mma and you know interestingly i've gotten to you know interview quite a number of fighters you know in both mma boxing and of course bare knuckle as well i had david feldman on, on my show in episode 14 of 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 the show so like it's interesting how i just became a fan of something that is not popular you know in the country where i come from and I love MMA, right? And of course, anytime I'm speaking to people in MMA, one of the very first things I like to put them on the spot on is uh, your philosophy of the top three disciplines, right? That yeah. you need to master, to master MMA. For me, right, it's wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and Muay Thai or kickboxing, right? So mm -hmm. those three, I feel like if you are, you know, a master at those three disciplines, you will be a well-rounded mixed martial artist but for you like what are the top three the top three yeah this i opinion. believe although i do think you need strong kick defense i'm obviously a huge fan of boxing i think good boxing hands will get through a tie right kick boxing so i would say boxing definitely wrestling definitely because you could have mediocre ground but if you have a good scramble Wrestling for sure. You can't even question wrestling. That determines where the fight goes. Yes. But I think when it comes to the ground, you know, jujitsu is great, but you can't take anything away from sambo. There's other disciplines that I think are wow, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. combat sambo. It's like you're in love with the Dagestani boys. You <laughs> are in love with the Dagestani boys. I need to, I need to call Mahaches. I'm like, hello, Alex is in love with you, huh? Khabib. Let's, let's get you a, a Dagestani boy. Are you married now? Oh, yeah, I love the Russian fights. So I would like Coach Farbez. He's from Uzbekistan. So oh, I there's see. There's some influence I, I, there. I, I see, I see, I see. There, there has to be, there has to be an influence, you know. There has to be an influence. Go on, like the Russian guys. Yes, Sambo is really effective. Combat Sambo. Oh, yeah. We, we see the guys that are masters in Sambo. They are doing really great stuff in MMA. But like, how, so you transitioned into MMA, right? Before getting into BKFC, because a lot of um, guys in the BKFC are from mma backgrounds but i think like in the next couple of years we'll start seeing people who like go into bkfc right by starting to train bare knuckle i think just because the, the sport is still young we have people yeah. like coming from different backgrounds people are coming from boxing people coming from mma right into bare knuckle 
Well, over it's a time. very new, yeah. yeah. It's a new and exciting sport. So I think people are just trying to, you know, seize the opportunity while, while it's still growing. And I love that these newer sports. I feel like it does even out the playing field. That, that's... Especially like for women, because there isn't like a strong history of men being, you know, the dominant gender, right? Like there's other sports where, you know, just historically aren't put on the same, aren't given the same publicity. But I think with MMA being a newer or progressive sport now bare knuckle i think that it gives a lot of yeah really presents a lot of opportunity for women and people who may have not really been recognized have they doing a more traditional sport hmm, interesting yeah. but i want you to talk about your mma career like how did it go with mma and like what made you transition to um, the bkfc so MMA, I did it when I was pretty young. Like I said, it's my first. I didn't, I didn't compete in boxing or anything before MMA. I had a strong grappling background. I really love grappling. Like I started off as a wrestler. Had my four, five fights out of Saskatoon. Moved to Edmonton to well, you know, it's a bigger city, bigger training facilities, different coaching. Um, but soon after I moved here, I ended up with a knee injury. So I had that surgery. That's all right. The plan was to go pro. I had my first pro MMA fight lined up, ended up getting injured, took a break. When I came back from my break, I took on one more MMA fight against Lupi Godinez, actually. She's in the UFC Whoa, now. Whoa, Lupi. Yeah. Oh, wow. I did lose, did lose to her. Whoa. I lost to Lupi, but I will brag that I was in the ring with Lupi. But, you know, it was my first fight back after after a good break. I honestly thought I was going to beat her. Her amateur record wasn't that great. Now she's on a tear. But yes. soon, yeah. So I was planning continuing with MMA. But soon after that fight, my knees started acting up again. And I can't quit fighting. Mm. So I was like, well, let's just run hard with what my body is letting me do. And that was boxing. So then I got in, I don't know, 20 something amateur boxing fights. And at some point, He's gone go pro. Can't be hanging yes. out fighting kids forever, right? That's not okay. really what amateur boxing's about. And mm. with the corruption in boxing, there is a very small chance I could make it to Team Canada, even if I beat first place, right? They only want to select basically their hometown favorites, which in Canada is people from Quebec and Toronto. Albertans don't really have much of an opportunity there. That's on my shoulder. Um, so, so yeah, my coaches is. They lined up a pro fight for me. My other teammates went pro around the same time. And, like, oh. like yeah. And, you know, watching BKFC and noticing how small of a ring that they're fighting in, as soon as they saw how small the ring was, like, this is a dream. <laughs> always wanted to fight. Always wanted to fight in a phone booth. I get to fight oh, in a phone booth with minimal rules. I'm like, count me in. This sport is meant for me. I've been talking about, dreaming about the moment I get to fight. Either with my front leg tied to the opponent's front leg where you just have to throw down and scrap like a three-legged race or in the phone booth. I'm like, this is it. Exactly. You know, I, I was talking earlier about how BKFC is designed, you know, with the smaller cage, right? And of course, yeah. it's advantages to fighters who like to fight in the pockets. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's a disadvantage to guys who like to, you know, fight with range. So mm -hmm. it feels like the sport was built, you know, for people like yourself because people yeah. are actually in there to throw down people are actually in there to fight that's who bkfc is for i love that it doesn't favor ring dancers people who just want to fight evasively make it a boring fight prance around getting a jab or two i know like the couple the few fights i lost in amateur boxing that's that's how they won. They didn't do more damage. They didn't get in more shots, but they just made it look pretty for the judges. Got a couple yeah. of like, patterns, punches I'm, on my guard, and then that's, that's what boxing likes. Yeah. Man, so it's, how it's like the, this, is, this is an actual like raw fight. It's so, what I yeah. But, but for that, you know, like people, a lot of people find it very, very violent, especially with the fact that this is bare knuckle. You're talking about like gloves off the knuckles it is crazy yeah. right especially for women right so me getting into mma sometimes i try to like introduce the sports to people i try to introduce my mom into mma she was like ah no i cannot watch this i cannot watch this you know like a few female friends would be like 
excuse me, like, how is this even legal? Yeah, that's only one of the, <laughs> this is one of the events that I kind of avoided telling my mom. And then she found, oh, and go. then she found out anyways, so then she was calling me asking about the fight, and then I was avoiding those phone calls. Yes. Before I answer the phone, it's like, I kind of, like, wait out. It's like, do I think she's going to talk about the fight, or do I think, you know, she's just going to talk about my niece? And then I kind of feel out the vibe, <laughs> avoided <laughs> anything about the fight, while trying not to ignore her too much. <laughs> but she oh, found whoa. out anyways, and she was completely supportive, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, that that's one thing with mothers, you know, like, if you, if you say you want to go down any rabbit hole, like, a true mother would always give you support, you know. Just yeah. be successful at anything that you um, put your mind to. Yeah, excellence in any field, you know, true mothers always would support you, you know, because you can only lead a horse to the stream. You can't force it to drink, right? So they probably yeah. want you to do certain things with your life. But when there's a couple of while you're, you're, you're grown, right? You're grown adults and you're picking your path. And over time, you just discover that, you know, yeah, it wasn't even as bad as what they thought. And then they support you. <laughs> Yeah. But then, like, how, how did it feel for you now, you know, finally getting your mother's, you know, approval, your mother's support? Like, what were oh, the emotions that great. were going through? I think Whoa. secretly that's what everybody wants is their mother's approval, right? Their parents' approval. Mm. You know, the teenager, the rebellious years are over. I'm not trying to go against my parents. I'm just, you know, I was just, just hoping that they'll just get on board that I end up going with my passion rather than becoming a dentist or something she would have rather I know that she... <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, but then she uh, would have, I know she life... would have rather had me go to university but you I know see. she she accepts that her kids are living their best lives and yeah so... oh I see I see like Anyways, uh, it seems like we, we sort of have some sort of similarities, you know. Um, I know there are similarities between the Latin culture and, you know, the African culture, even that, even the Asian culture as well. You know, growing up, I, I wanted to study mass communication. And then I went to meet my father and I was like, okay, I want to go to university to study mass communication. Guess what he told me? He told right. me that, pick that course if you know you're going to pay your school fees yourself. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> and then it was like, if you know the one paying your school fees, you better be something professional. Oh, this is your problem. And then, you know, he made, he made me study economics. He made me become a chartered accountant. You know, uh, yeah. like over time, I, I'm grateful, you know, for the opportunities, the doors of opportunities, the money that has made me earn. But I still, you know, life was still full circle into chasing your passion. So I wanted to be a broadcaster at the time. But yes. now... I'm a podcaster. <laughs> life. Life, you know, will always, you know, make you chase your passion at some point, right? So I know that our parents always, you know, want the best for us, right? They want us to live a good life, right? However, yeah. you know, sometimes when you like push, you know, kids into doing certain things they're not really passionate about, you could like lead them into, into leaving some sort of like a miserable life. He mm -hmm. gets it. So it's it's not always like very advisable to push your kids, you know. To, you know, but like mark. they do, yeah. they want the best for us, but they didn't grow up with these same, you know, like what's a podcast when they were growing up? You know, it's interesting. You know, in this age and time, there are so many things you can do. So many things you can do. So right now, like I'm still an accountant, right? But yeah. I still do um, my passion. I still I'm a podcaster, right? So. And I, I, I get I get what he was trying to do at the time. You know, he told me so, he told me something at the time. He was like, you can't, you know, a mass communicator and be an accountant at the same time. But you can be an accountant yeah. but also be in the media. Okay. Yeah. I think he was really? talking more about transferable skills, you know, like when you because for me, like I have had the privilege to like work in two of the top four global four accounting firms in the world and i see you know the exposure that it gave me you know the organizations i've consulted for right it gave me that confidence it gave me analytical skills you know it made me it, it built my network as well you know to be able to yeah. you know interact with live with people and gave me real life exposure and experience i was like okay this this man knew what he was doing all along he knew yeah it. Sometimes you don't give our parents enough credit, right? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But, but of There's course, something about time... being 18 and thinking that you know everything. 
But but you know what? On a lighter note, like even though your mom, you know, probably wanted you to be a dentist, I think you're still a dentist because you dent the teeth of your opponents Great. in the ring. I can still fix up some teeth in there. You still fix it up. <laughs> So, so you're still a dentist, you know, but I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to be your client. <laughs> but you're not going to have to pay. The, the show will pay me. You get paid and you get your dental work in. Which is yeah. kind of funny. My coach had a good point. He's like, you've been studying fighting for 10 years. You're Whoa. basically a doctor. I'm telling you, that's the thing. You know, my father used to say something like, if you do something <laughs> continuously for 10 years, you're like a PhD in, in that thing. If you do it for 15 years, you're like a professor in that thing. So exactly. you're, you're, you're more like a PhD in fighting because you've, de you've dedicated way more than 10,000 hours into that craft. Come on, like somebody has to respect that. Yeah. <laughs> somebody has to respect that. Somebody has to respect that. You know what? I think it was me not giving myself my sport enough respect and just saying, I don't know, I'm getting older. Maybe I should go look into do something else and then. Coaches being like, what are you talking about? You've been practicing something that could make you money for 10 years. Exactly. Do something you... with it. You're not going to go and hang out in university for six years and then yeah, go and work at Subway. Like, it, it, it will make sense. That, that, that's, that's a waste of time. And you know something, yeah. you know, life is measured in time. Life uh -huh. is measured in time. If you waste your time, you're wasting your life. And that's why I don't like people yeah. wasting my time. You get it. No. And that's why I also appreciate it when people share their time with me. You know, you're sharing your time on this podcast with me. And it's something that I very, very much appreciate because there's, you know, a fragment, a percentage, you know, a ratio of your life that is being spent on this podcast, right? And, you yeah. know, have to appreciate it. We have to, you know, utilize it properly. We need to, you know, educate and, of course, entertain people, you know, with this time that is given to us, yeah. right? And, of course, you know, speaking of, you know, educating people, like, what, what advice do you have for, you know, the younger generation, you know, trying to go into sports, especially combat sports? You know, you've been into yeah. this 10 years. How old are you now? How old am I? I am 31. 31 oh we're almost eight mates i'm 32 so yeah it means you you were I'm born 30. in 1993 you got it yeah uh wow interesting when is your birthday it's in june 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 what june 21st well june 21st. save that in your calendar make sure you send me some coffee definitely definitely and hopefully you're probably in london we'll, we'll go to a studio in london go to a coffee shop as well Sorry, this guy is just terrorizing me. He has been through the whole interview. Whoa! What's the, what's the name? What's... It's Boops. Boots. Whoa. Boop. Boops. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, boops. boops. Oh, Boops. Oh, yeah. wow. Don't, don't mind me like that. There's a pharmacy called Boots in, in England. So. <laughs> like a fantasy. Like... like a pharmacy. A pharmacy. Like a, a drug. Oh, a pharmacy. Know, so... like you said a fantasy. I'm like, what? No, no, no. Oh, no. A pharmacy is called Boots. So anytime I hear anything, like it just comes to you related to what you kind of used to. But like going back to like the advice for, for the younger generation, like what advice do you have for the younger generation? You are a millennial. And of course, we have the Gen Z, you know, popping up, right? There's a it lot. Is, yeah. Th there is a lot of, you know, controversy with the Gen Zs, right? But mm. let's give them advice before we talk about the controversy. It's stay ready. Mm. Especially when you're fighting amateur. Take on, on challenging fights. You're doing it for the experience. Everyone's going to lose some fights. If you let that get in your way, you're going to get nowhere. The best fighters lost their fights. I've seen so many people, you know, their spirits are broken because they lost an amateur fight. Mm. Move on to the next. You're going to get better every fight. Mm. Don't let this stuff, don't let, don't let this disappoint you. You're not going to be the winner every time. It's the people who stay in the sport. They're the ones who make it. Mm. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's not gonna be an easy path, right? Never, never. And don't waste your path. time partying. Don't waste your time being a degenerate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> family vacation, sure, relax. You don't have to make your entire life every single day the gym. Everybody needs, you know, like the day off. Mm -hmm. But don't waste your don't waste your prime when to be getting stronger when you have. Especially men, they got, you know, lots of testosterone going through their bodies. They do put a lot of muscle on in their teens, early mm -hmm. 20s. Don't waste, waste those days. 
Mm, don't waste Make something days. out of it. Put in the work, then then you get your play time. Mm, exactly. Don't make fun of your friends, but you gotta put in that work. Hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I, I see you, you're really, you're really a doctor fighting. <laughs> to be honest, you know, I did read a book growing up. Um, I think in my teenage years, the title of the book is "Invest Your Useful Years." Yeah. And I think it kind of transformed my life because I look at like what I do in my thirties, right? Like what I did mm-hmm. in my twenties, like set the pathway for me, like the skill sets I'd acquired, you know, all of the hustle and bustle I had done, you know, all of the hard work I'd put in my twenties. Because when I was about a clock 30, I was just, you know, thinking in my head, like, where did the twenties go to? Size with me. <laughs> Did, did that happen no. to you? You know, when you're about to close yeah. 30, you start thinking like, like, what, what did I do? Like, what did I do with my life? But, you Crazy. know, like, yeah, like everything you do in your youthful year sort of like is a platform for you in, in your 30s and like for the rest of your life. So don't waste, don't waste that time. And the best thing I, I did in my 20s, because I was getting sucked into the party scene, despite being involved in athletics. Mm. Despite having a couple amateur MMA fights, I was still getting stuck into the party scene. I left Saskatoon. I left all those connections, stayed in touch with my friends, but I moved to Edmonton where I know I knew I wasn't going to have distractions. I had my chance, you know, to basically start again and not associate with anybody who's going to drag me down. So, you know, everybody I associate with in Saskatoon, that everybody's living a positive lifestyle. There's something about them that I inspire to be like, right? There's a quality that I'm trying to get from them that I'm spending time around. Whatever that quality is, you know, it could be kindness. It could be their dedication to sport, health, and fitness. But, you know, it, if I stayed in the same city, that would have been hard to do. It's hard to, you know, on a lonely night, not to go and hang out with your friends. But if your friends are being generous, guess, what, guess what's going to happen? Exactly. Exactly. Because I, yeah. I think about my life as a younger person as well, right? Like... You know, that you become a chartered accountant, you need to write professional exams, right? I remember times yeah. I had to deny myself, you know, going out with friends, you know, and just to study hard to write these exams. And the funny thing is, you know, when you like you know, uh, take yourself away from people, they would sort of be angry about it, like, oh, you're not partying with them. But when you, you know, come up with those achievements, they, those same people will tell you, oh, wow, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah, look I, at yourself. Yeah, well, I was a look little bit more yourself. fortunate, right? Because I was kind of like in my MMA gym, especially. I was kind of like mm-hmm. one of the younger ones, kind of one of the up and comers. Mm-hmm. So, yes, thankfully, my friends also pushed for me to get out of the city and go do something better. Mm. So I'm happy. There, I don't think there's any resentment. I even talked about quitting. My friends, they're yeah. all they're all upset. They're like, "No, you're the one of us who has a chance of going pro. You don't get to quit." Mm. Exactly. We blue things. You're in the bigger city. Go make something of yourself. Yeah, thankfully, thankfully, my friends have been, you know, very supportive of my decision. Wow. They're still friends. Wow. I hope the Gen Z are taking notes now. Like, make good friends. You know, make good friends. Friends that would encourage you to achieve. You know, to 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 go above and beyond. You know, to to achieve your potentials. Right. Yeah, very, yeah. very essential. Very, yeah. very, very essential. You There's know, enough goodness. Sorry, here you go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you talk. I was gonna touch on something still on this, right? But yeah, I can't complete what you were trying to say. Okay. There's enough goodness to go around. Not everyone's gonna be on the same pursuits. There's no reason to be cutting down your friends, trying to get in the way of their glory. Mm. Right. Even if they're small, even if they're, you know, they have something small, a small business that hasn't taken off the ground. There's no reason to cut them down, say that they're to say that they're wasting their time. I've had friends, you know, start stuff out of nothing. Nobody believed them. It's the people who stay gritty. They're the ones who make it. Mm. Right. There's yeah. You got to encourage your friends. It's your people back home. They're, they are. They could be your biggest support system. They are, you know, my, as soon as I missed my fight, uh, as soon as I won my fight, like, what do I do? I start calling my people from back home. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. And of course, they're so proud of you. Oh, yeah, they're proud. Oh, f- fantastic. Fantastic. I think I was, I was going to touch on something, right? Now, mm-hmm. this podcast, the Kingdom's podcast, right, is about sharing the stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. But uh, recently, I've had to rebrand, right? And of course, 
the interesting thing is you are the first person who is going to be on the rebranded platform and the rebranded tagline is sharing the stories of extraordinary people and mm -hmm. dissecting hot topics right so we want to be dissecting hot topics and of course mm -hmm. like you are a sports person you are in the combat sports world right hot topic yeah. now we were delving towards a particular hot topic and that's you know with the degenerates of the younger generation the gen z's right i seen something on social media um yesterday there was this you know 23 year old girl that was you know she she's um a content creator and she put something out there she was like it's crazy how she made a post and said this particular app does not work with ios and a lot of people were not messaging her to ask oh, uh why can't it work on my apple on my iphone why can't like she was like i said this does not work with ios like what are you saying ios is the operating system for iphones it's crazy how you know we have limitless information in this age and time right but yeah. a lot of you know the gen z's are very very limited in their knowledge like you yeah. like a lot of them you know act in no, I don't. I don't have a, a respectful way of saying this, but very dumb. Like yeah. very, very, very dumb. Like yeah. In our own age and time, you had to like go the extra mile to find information, right? But with you know the click of a button, with Google, with everything, right? You can access information very easily. So why I... would you act dumb, right, in an age where you have a lot of information? So that is number one hot topic. And number two hot topic, right, is what is your take on transgenders in sports, especially combat sports? You remember in the Olympics oh, we had that issue. We, we, we had that issue. But let, let, let's talk about let's talk about the Gen Zs first. Let's talk about the Gen Zs. First. What is your take, you know, on this younger generation and their attitude? You know, it's crazy. I think a lot of it, I think it's kind of funny because like in the day and age where you have all the information at your fingertips all the time, you think that you'd be seeing smarter people who know more and just have access mm -hmm. to all this information. They'd be able to cite things, get proper information. But I think it made them lazy because they know they don't have to work for this information. Mm. You know, and I think they are kind of undermining experts because they could Google something and, you know, challenge any topic, but it's not real knowledge if you're just typing in a few keywords into Google and just blurting out whatever the first thing is that Google tells you that slides through the point that you're trying to make. Yeah. So, I do think I see yeah. it. And I think another... <laughs> okay, another thing? Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, like... Another thing is I think that a lot of why they're acting dumb is the soft, which I don't disagree. I mean, I feel like maybe we swung a little too far to one side on, you know, not using militaristic types of punishments. like Militaristic, I like that. Right? I mean, yeah. Like my boyfriend coaches kids football, high school football. He says that they're yeah. literally not, the kids weren't behaving. I was like, why didn't you just make them do push-ups? Mm. He said, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to give exercise as punishment. But it's like, is making the kids a better athlete, is making them stronger punishment? Or is it just discouraging talking while helping them get better? But I guess that's viewed as militaristic. So I think that it, it's taking, it makes it a lot harder to teach these young kids because... Well, every everything that's telling them that they're wrong is basically you're not allowed to do it. Whoa. You're not allowed to challenge the kids. You're not allowed to discipline them. So they're just running around doing whatever they want. And what do kids want to do? They want to just run around, play games, and eat ice cream. So now they're kind of in a way parenting themselves. And there's nothing we can do about it. That is crazy. And you know, like for, for, for people like yourself, myself, we are like towards the end of the millennial range, right? We are millennials. Well, I think the, yeah. millenn the millennials end at 1996 and um, okay. the Gen Z start at 1997. Yeah. 
I think okay. I think I'm correct. I'm correct with that demographic, you know, statistic. Now looking at the so it means that millennials, there are some millennials that are parents to people mm. in the Gen Z, right? And you know, after yeah. the Gen Z, we have the Gen Alpha, right? And there are all <laughs> those ones, those ones, you think Gen Zs are crazy? Just wait, wait. <laughs> Okay. Wait till you see what Gen Alpha are coming with. Those kids are dangerous. What? And even labeling <laughs> kids as Alpha. Alpha, don't worry. That's not the right. It's not the right message to be giving to be giving them. They, you know, I feel like that's almost taking away the respect for adults, people who've been around longer, who want the who want better for them. Now, you're labeling them as Alpha. It's gonna get to their heads. Uh, Gen Alpha are. Beasts, <laughs> you don't want to know what Gen Alpha are coming with. I think Gen Alpha are like the 2010s, you know, downwards. Yeah, those guys, okay. those guys, you know, it's, it's, it's really crazy. But like, generally, like, where do you think we got it wrong in terms of, you know, our patterning the, the attitudes, the behaviors, the characters, you know, of, you know, people in the Gen Z? Like, where do you think things went wrong? Because I think something is really, really wrong. Why do I think things went wrong? Everything went to... Things went a little too soft. Mm. You know, now if you don't like something, it gets cancelled. You protest it. Cancel culture. Cancel culture. Mm. Cancel culture is what went wrong. Whoa. Cancel culture. You know, it's like you take away, you imply, like when I went to school, they took away, you know, you know, you're not allowed to touch another kid. You're not allowed to fight. It's okay. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Be fine. But you got to put the toughness back in somewhere. Maybe if they teach kids fighting, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you're not allowed to scrap on the playground. You're not allowed to rocks at kids. But maybe if they implemented more martial arts in school, it'll be a way to almost give that toughness back. In a safe, sportman-like manner, and I think it would build a lot of character. Yes, I think think so. I think martial arts is very essential for building character. Yeah, especially now that we're not allowed to fight at school. At school, and like you know, fighting is not, it's a primitive thing. Humans have been doing it forever. It's not a made-up thing. Every animal, every species fights, and I think we've almost taken that away from kids. Lots of kids will never have that opportunity. You know, you got to be on the losing end of a fight. You, you have to know what it feels like. Uh, exactly. You have to know that there's a possibility that somebody bigger and stronger than you could mm. punch you in the face. Mm. And you could lose that fight. That, and cancel culture ain't going to protect you all the time. I'm telling you. I, I'm telling you. Because there are a lot of Gen Zs, you know, especially on social media, like Twitter, TikTok, and these guys are saying a bunch of crap about people in society doing different things, right? And then you think about it like, if this person only met me in real life, they, they cannot, they cannot tell me shit to my face. No, no way. But like, we have a lot of keyboard heroes these days. Just because you have access to the internet and you probably like have a phone or have a laptop that you can just type things to people and it affects people's mental health. Yeah. The adrenaline, the false sense of security, the false sense of being a celebrity, fake lives, being an influencer, but you know that everything, you only put the best of you out there and you're miserable. Whoa. Yeah. It's funny. There's a, I think there's a very skewed perspective. Hmm. Like I've met boxing influencers, I don't know, 60,000 plus followers, right? Posting, Ooh. posting as coaches, and I've sparred them and I've dummied them. And I'm not singling anyone out. I'm not singling anyone out. Uh, but you just gotta know that what you're seeing on the internet isn't. It's not. It's not real. Whoa! You walk into the gym and I say, "Look at that fine girl. She's she's gonna mess you up." Uh, you know, it's crazy. Like you know, on the ego of a guy, where the girl beats you up. You know, a girl puts a beating on you. You be like, what? It really screens through the athletes that we get because, you know, especially the teenagers, like we get, we get a lot of Gen Z 
But you can see the real Gen Zers as soon as they get a little bit beat up by me. I'm not out there giving literal kids concussions, but lots of them get offended. <laughs> there are lots of them get offended if a girl beats them up and those kids don't come back. And I say they're they're not cut anyways. They're too soft. They can't take a loss. They're not going to make it anyways. Good riddance. But right, the ones who stay humble and try to learn from from me, except that I just am a more experienced soldier fighter. Those kids last. They stay in the sport. They stay with the gym. They fit. They fit in great. So, you know, I think I'm also a really good screening process to some for little boys and ring onions. We'll see how the attitude <laughs> changed after. <laughs> the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper. You want to fight for all vows? You have to fight her first. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, like, as much as, you know, people talk about the Gen Z being a degenerate, like, I give them the props. I respect, I respect, you know, the the great ones amongst them because there are a lot of, you know, great individuals that are Gen Zs, you know, that go on to do, like, really great things. I think the fact that they have this culture of, you know, skepticism, questioning authority you know it makes you know authorities you know be on their feet right, right because yeah. you know when you're going to be questioned you want to always do the right thing right so and of course you know, they are also like very very well uh adapted to technology like mm -hmm. in the course of my work like i work with gen z's that are fantastic in terms of you know technology they get work done faster you know because I didn't know, maybe also like the lazy mentality, you know, a lot of them are lazy but brainy. You know, when you yeah. want to get something up really quickly, right, give it to a lazy or brainy person, they would always find a way to use technology to get to that goal. You know, unlike those of us who are millennials and probably like the gen, generation X, generation Y, who have been used to manual processes right <laughs> they they, yeah. they are really they are they're really really efficient with technology and you know there are really really great ones amongst them and you know i give i give them their props the next you know hot topic is you know <laughs> the transgenders in combat sports like, what is your take did, 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 did you hear about what happened in the olympics yeah i feel like she's a very sticky a very tricky one because i do believe that she was born biologically on her birth certificate i do mm -hmm. believe she is a female yes that, yeah the, the very popular one the algerian girl yeah yeah the algerian girl she she was born female but i've heard of cases of transgenders coming in to fight mm -hmm. you know females you know yeah but it's taking away from the opportunity for women to fight other biological people who were born and grew up women should be fighting people who were born as women, grew up as women. You know, men have different bone structure. Even if you transition to a woman, you don't have a woman's bone structure. You're at a biological, That's right. an unnatural biological advantage. So, you know, it's if they want to participate in the gym, I think it's great. That's okay. But don't enter a woman competition you know, without full disclosure knowing that it is going to be more dangerous for the woman to fight somebody who literally was a man mm. who's i don't think there's a way to transition 100 percent. like if you dig up a transition person who's transitioned if you dig up their skeleton or the the gender that they'll be labeled with is the gender that they are born with there's nothing that you can do to make a full complete switch to mm. a point that is completely fair in the sports world. Mm. And I would train with a transgender, no problem. I would spar with a trans with a transition person, no problem, because we're in the gym, it's a safe place, and we want the best for each other. We're trying to we're trying to better each other. And I do think there is a place for them to compete, but maybe against each other, because now that there's more and more transition fighters, you know, and people who just they practice boxing, they want to fight, they want to test themselves. I think that there is opportunity for them to test themselves against each other. They could train in mainstream gyms, but no, I don't think that people should be flip-flopping genders and then fighting in gender-based sports. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, it means that we need to work on the regulations, right, in order to sort of define, yeah. you know, who is qualified to 
uh, participate as a male and who's qualified to participate as you know as a female but uh, there are great cases where like certain females have like hormonal disorders right where mm-hmm. you probably have like high levels of testosterone you know in a female like what happened with um the the algerian fighter and there was this lady who used to run for south africa's caster semenya right he had yes. high levels of testosterone and then they told her to like do hormonal therapy to bring the testosterone lower but what do you think for a biologically you know born female who has high levels of testosterone like what's your take on on that you know situation do you think it's it's a good idea to make them go through hormonal therapy to suppress it no, or you know, they compete no that's not the natural we shouldn't make them take this is their natural body. They're a born female and they have a biological advantage that they didn't give themselves. Nature gave them this biology, gave them this advantage. They are not doing it. You know, like what if, you know, it's like any other biological natural advantage. Let's say this fighter is born with unusually big fist. He could hit really hard. This woman is born with testosterone. I don't think we need to pump anything that's not meant to be in her body, into her body to bring her down because she has a natural advantage. She's not doing anything but she this literally is her. This is her body. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. I see. You know, there there are lots of, you know, schools of thought, you know, on this. You know, some people feel like, oh, it's an unfair advantage, you know. And you know then we're discriminating against literally what she was born like. It's like, no, you can't just say no, I don't like how you're born. I don't like that you're that you're more athletically gifted than me. If I, I had to fight a girl who's just naturally more athletically gifted than me, I guess I'd better just fight extra smart. Mm. You know, I don't think I have any place to complain about that. I see. I, like I never it. got hormone testing. What if I had just, you know, I don't know what my hormones are like. I don't want to be like, oh, you don't like that you have this much estrogen, this much testosterone. Because like, I never done anything to alter my hormones. I'd be crushed. Mm-hmm. If I worked my ass off and been told, no, we don't like how you're bored. Yeah, that, that would be very, very, you know, uh, would I say unfair? And it would, it would be a crush on that person's mental health as well. I think we really don't think about, like, what these people go through, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's more like body shaming a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more like yeah, that. Yeah, I do think so. I do yeah. think it is body shaming. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bad body shaming. There's nothing they could do about it. They yeah, never tried but... to cheat. They didn't cheat. They didn't think anything. Yeah. Like, are you, are you telling me I am abnormal because I was born in a particular way? It's more like treating people with disabilities with, you know, uh, disrespect or segregation or, yeah, discrimination against people with disabilities. Oh. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy how we want to protect people that are vulnerable, right? People that are weak, people that are weaker, but we don't want to protect people that are stronger. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, <laughs> we are getting to us the end, you know, of the port, right? And I would ask you, like, what, what, what do you think the future, you know, holds for, for like? I want that what? contract. I want to run with this as hard as I can. I want the, I want to be not in the prospect series, but the actual BPFC, and I want to go for that one fifteen belt. Oh wow! Interested, interested. I'm so here for you... a good time, not a long time. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, for the most of it, right? Yeah, for a good time, not a long time. Not everyone's handed this opportunity. Why would I let it go to waste? I got to do as much as I can with it while I can. Like, exactly, exactly. Yeah, fantastic one. So before you leave, like, do you want to give anybody a shout out before you leave? Hi, mom. Whoa. My mom, my brother, now that she knows if I peak, I've seen my brother's been my biggest supporter, has always helped me with church and everything throughout my amateur career, but of course, also my sponsors, Redline Motors, Foxtel Cider, the Glitch Fight Shop, my gym, Wolf House, I'm missing a couple of people, I'm sure, but, you know. Okay, yes, okay, of course, support, you know, like, you I like it. I love to say that uh, an attitude of gratitude is good attitude, right? So from me to you is thank you very much. You know, I appreciate your time. And of course, I wish you the very, very best for the future. God bless you, Alex. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And it was very nice to meet you.